Hello and welcome to another adventure here on my channel. Today I'm going to get to do honestly one of my favorite things on this channel, explore a niche community. And today it's going to be the VHS community, but luckily this time I have a guide. I am getting to interview one of, I would say, probably the most prominent popular figures in the community, Katie Video. Honestly, this interview was really amazing to get to do. She is such a lovely person and clearly has such a passion for what she does. She is a true artist and I could not think of a single better person to guide me through exploring this community. We're going to talk about what the VHS community is, where you can find it, why VHSs, as well as explore her business, Katie Video, and some of her seriously gorgeous art. If you are someone like me who just loves all different kinds of art, then this is the video for you. I am so sorry that unfortunately I was only able to film it on my webcam via Zoom. It's not the best quality ever, but the audio is fine. But I am hoping to, in the future, if I'm doing more of these interviews regularly, which fingers crossed I think would be really cool, I will be able to up my quality, though it's not bad. I'm just warning you it's not quite as good as this quality, but the content itself, the quality of the interview, I think is seriously awesome. She's a wonderful person. So let's dive in to exploring the VHS community because genuinely it's just so interesting to explore these different things that people love so, so much. Hello. Thank you so much for doing this for my channel, for letting me interview you. I'm so, so excited to learn about the VHS community and this more niche community that you have brought to my attention. Thank you for having me on. It's just, it's great to be able to have this conversation with you in person. It's like, yay. Well, not really in person, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, because <laughs> we've chatted in DMs a lot before this, I think even before you started your business, I think. Yeah. And so <laughs> Much I'm excited to promote you. And I'm excited to be able to be on your channel. It's like, I've been watching your channel and communicating with you in DMs and then started this business. And now it's like, yay. <laughs> it's definitely feels like it was meant to be for a while. Like it just all led up and came together and I'm very excited. But before we dive in, promote yourself. Where can people find you? Where can people find your business? Find more information if after this video they want to know more. Like I assume they probably will. So to find out more information about uh, what I do, which is Katie Video, there's an Instagram. Uh, it's at Katie Video and that's K-A-D-I Video as well as the website, which is www.katievideo.com. Very cool. Awesome. But before we get to the business and what exactly you do, if you could just explain to me, like, what is the VHS community? If you were going to explain it to someone who knows nothing, I tried to do a little research before this, but I'd still say I'm pretty much a beginner. Like, what is it? So the VHS community is a group of people that absolutely love VHS, and it ranges from people who go to the different trade shows and pick up old VHS and collect them to also people that like what the community sometimes calls bootleggers, <laughs> which is pretty much just making fan-made versions of VHS tapes and VHS box art based on usually newer films and giving them life, bringing life into them as if they were um, available back in the 90s or the 80s as VHS tapes. And that's what you do, right? Yes, it's exactly what I do. I got my inspiration from things like Suncoast Video and Blockbuster and just everything nostalgic. Pretty oh, much. we all miss, we all miss the blockbuster era. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and you said there are trade shows. Yeah. Well, maybe trade shows isn't the right word for it, but there are um, like flea markets and shows that they will put together that are specifically centered around selling old VHS tapes that you have. Mm -hmm. And VHS tapes, some of these can range for like. Um, couple of dollars all the way to thousands of dollars, depending on how rare the VHS tape is. So sometimes people will go to these shows in search of very specific VHS tapes to add to their collections. Two follow-up questions. What is the highest you've ever seen a VHS tape go for personally? Not necessarily yours, but just like in the community in general. 
And what are some of the, those more rare coveted VHS tapes? Oh, give me one second. I need to find out what the exact amount was. <laughs> I know I have just recently gotten to the pin community, like the enamel pin community. And the most I've seen one sell for, not the most I've seen one like priced at, but actually sell for was $800. And I was so, just like. Yeah, there's um, probably the most famous amongst everyone in the VHS community is the Little Mermaid. So it was the original Disney Little Mermaid. And that one has gone for as much as $40,000 on Etsy. It is <laughs> a, such a rare tape. And people want to get a hold of it because I don't know if you know the story about the, the Little Mermaid, but the cover art <laughs> has some imagery on there that was deemed as inappropriate and it was redone. So there's that very specific edition that people want to get their hands on. Isn't it because like the artist was being fired afterwards? So he like purposefully hid imagery. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the story. And so people now are like, regardless of whether or not you believe that imagery looks like that particular item <laughs> is up to debate. But um, because people believe it, that's why I want it. Wants it. Yeah. I, I heard about that, I don't know, two or three years ago. And I was like, I have an early Little Mermaid tape. And I looked and it is not that one, unfortunately. Yeah. But $40,000, that's like, I was expecting you to say like maybe two or 3,000. Like that was my expectation of something that was like, that would be ridiculous. That's a car. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> you know what? Good for them. Um, so, so say I want to join the VHS community. Where do I look? Where do I go? How does someone like get into all of this? Well, one of the easiest ways that you could get into the VHS community is start buying some tapes on eBay. Uh, one of the ways that I actually got into it was buying what they call mystery boxes. And so you get a box that has like 10 or 12 random tapes in there to add to your collection to start with. So these can range from brand new tapes to tapes that are gently used. And occasionally it could be tapes that are a little bit more beat up. But it depends on the seller and it's a great way to be able to start. And if you don't have a VCR, that's fine. Sometimes people just collect the tapes for the sake of collecting the tapes. You don't necessarily need to have a, a VCR or one of those combination VCR um, television sets. It helps if you want to watch the tapes, but True. that's way, one way you can get into it. And another thing too is it is... A, an old media so it's like don't expect to have very high quality footage that's not the point of collecting the VHS tapes it's going to be um, a very small resolution and as long as you have that expectation in place it's just this fun nostalgic way of viewing media but if say you started collecting, like, where do you go for the community, the people? Like, do people tend to go to Instagram or Reddit or Facebook pages? Like, where is, where are the people in this community? So the people in the community are scattered across TikTok, Instagram, Reddit. Uh, one really great way to get started is as a VHS subreddit. And people post the tapes that they've collected, the tapes that they're looking for, how much things are valued at. And so that's a great way to get started if you really are looking for information. And if you just want to kind of share your collections, then TikTok and Instagram are a great way of being able to get to know people and share things that you have and find other things that you might want. Sometimes people will be selling tapes on Instagram. And then another option, though... I mean, I don't really use it very much is Facebook and the Facebook marketplace. Um, you can also exchange tapes that way too. Okay, cool. So kind of just like everywhere you'll find the, you'll find the community when you look for it. Yeah. Um, but that leads to probably like my most burning question. What I want to know most is like, why VHS tapes? Why not like DVDs or other forms of physical media or what, like, why not just stream the movies? 
because we can stream whatever we want. Like, what is it that VHS in particular has that nothing else does? So for me personally, and I'm pretty sure that there are other people who, who feel the same way, that of all the physical media, VHS, and I guess you could say Laserdisc and, and Beta as well, but those have their own little communities too. There's a tactile sensation that a DVD and even a Blu-ray and the 4K don't have. Uh, those usually come in those little plastic cases and the artwork on them is usually pretty generic where the VHS tapes tend to have really more thought it seems put into their uh, the artwork and with the exception of like the Disney tapes with the clamshells there is mm -hmm. also that like um, paper uh, feeling which is also really great to work with and it's uh Give me a second. <laughs> it's okay. Go ahead. Uh, I had a cat over here wanting attention. <laughs> um, best kind of cat, anyway. Exactly. So with the with cardboard or cardstock, there's more flexibility in what you can do with it. The VHS tapes, they actually have more room on them to put artwork, whereas DVDs, Blu-rays, the 4K Ultras, those little plastic containers, they don't have as much space to put artwork. And so while it's also fun to be able to put together something out of like paper or uh, cardstock, there's also that room and that space to be creative and do more with the art. So the fact that they actually do take up more space is like part of the appeal instead of take away from it. Because like I think, well, a CD or a DVD, it doesn't take up a lot of room. So if I'm going to collect them, I can have a lot even if I don't have a lot of storage space but for VHS it's kind of like you want you want that space you want the yeah you want that space to be able to mark make the art as an artist and then as somebody that's collecting it it has that very retro feel to it um, eventually I think that there's going to be a bigger community with the DVDs and that sort of nostalgia with DVD but it's also a lot easier to still find uh, DVDs and just like put a movie onto DVD and it it's not going to be any different in terms of the quality or not to the same extent as, as VHS, which just feels so nostalgic and so retro. It feels like you're being transported back to the 80s or back to the 90s at a DVD. The most it's going to do is make you feel like you've been transported maybe 10 years. <laughs> that's, that's true. Though I have to ask, because you brought up like the cardstock versus the clamshell Disney ones. See, I am not in the VHS community. Obviously, mm -hmm. I'm learning about it. But I, when I was a kid, I had VHSs. And, you know, I've actually just in the past couple of years finally been cleaning them out. So wish I could just be like, hey, I have these boxes I can send to you. But unfortunately, um, <laughs> just a hair too late. But I always loved the clamshell. I just loved the feel of it. And so is that like controversial in the community? Are there some people who do like the clamshell? Or is it like more popular to be like, no, we like the, the card stock, the, the paper? I think it's actually a preference. I know that there's actually a lot of people who love those Disney clamshell boxes. And there are people that will actually make their own VHS tapes um, and VHS art using clamshell. So that's I wouldn't cool. say that's, that's controversial, no. I, if for me personally, I like paper over plastic. So it's just one of those things where I try to go for something that's a little bit, despite the fact that it's still not eco-friendly, a little bit more biodegradable than plastic. Makes sense. And now makes me feel bad. <laughs> no, don't feel bad. Don't no, feel I'm bad. I, I have so much stuff that's not biodegradable. <laughs> I, and I feel like if you're going to be, like, I feel like if you're collecting something and you're like, I'm going to treasure this for years, that's different than if you're yeah. like, I'm going to use this cup once and throw it out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So. No, it's, it's very different. I mean, you could even say that the VHS tapes are, they're not biodegradable, so, oh. <laughs> but you're collecting them and you're keeping them and you're treasuring them. And it's a way of remembering media and keeping it alive and treasuring the fact that at one point in time, this was the go-to media. So it's very nostalgia based. But in a way, is it also countercultural to the 
or a rebellion to the streaming services, the feeling like we don't actually own anything we buy because I'll buy movies on YouTube. And well, if my account gets deleted, I don't like, like it can be easily taken away from me. Is this kind of in reaction to the, that feeling? It is actually that you, you hit it right on the nail. <laughs> like it's, that's exactly what this movement is about, which is why even though I do VHS and I don't really have any interest in doing anything like DVDs or Blu-ray, uh, 4K Ultra, it's still one of those things where it's physical media, you own it, it's, it's there. Um, if anything were to happen to the servers and things got erased, or like you said, your, your YouTube account gets deleted, that's fine. You still have it unless somebody were to break it or <laughs> yeah. different things can go wrong. <laughs> yeah, different things could go wrong. But for the most part, you own it. It's not something that's sitting on somebody else's server and you don't actually own it. That makes sense. So now that I genuinely feel like I understand this whole movement a lot more and thank you for explaining it so well and being so articulate. Um, and clearly so passionate about it. It's adorable. I love your passion. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, but now I want to know about your business, about Katie Video. Like, what is your business? What do you do? Introduce it to someone like they know nothing. They didn't have the forewarning I did to go explore your website. <laughs> <laughs> so with Katie Video, it's one of those um, passion projects that I it just started um, kind of wanting to like, see if I could do it were putting like um art that kind of looked retro and like something you would find at a blockbuster or like I'd mentioned earlier Suncoast video Hollywood video you can include that in there too I know that there's some Hollywood video fans out there and I started off thinking okay I'm gonna make this look retro because there's a lot of people in the community that do these kind of um art pieces and I was like I'll make it look retro like they do and then I realized no what I really want to do is I want to make art that looks exactly like it would have looked back in the 90s when you bought it this pristine piece of art it's one of those things where I wanted to bring to the community and to people that were interested in VHS I, I wanted to bring something that looked like you would find back at Suncoast Video when you would purchase it all nice sealed and wrapped and so what I started doing was playing around with the different art styles until I finally hit an art style that I really liked and so the Katie Video brand is pretty much this neon 80s aesthetic artwork love the 80s love <laughs> 80s artwork <laughs> and placed onto the um, VHS cardstock templates that I, I do <laughs> something like this, right? I'll take the uh, artwork that I do and then I'll place it onto the cardstock that I then will cut, score, fold, and turn into... That's so cool. <laughs> like, I saw, I saw pictures, but like something about seeing it, like holding it, like you're right, it had that like, whoa, that takes me back type of feeling, just seeing someone holding a VHS. <laughs> And I like having, because like I had mentioned earlier, I originally was trying to make it look distressed and make it look old, but I, I figured it's better to make it look new and then to shrink wrap it and have that feeling of, I just purchased this brand new VHS. But yeah, like something I want to clarify is when you said that other people tended to make it look retro, I guess I thought you meant artwork wise. But if I'm understanding correctly, what you mean is they make it look distressed. They make it look like, oh, it's been around a while while you decided to go the opposite direction and be like, it's the vintage artwork, but it feels when you get it in your hands new, you get that like fresh opening and experience. Like, is that what you're going for? Exactly. Yeah. To make it just feel like I just went back in time. And for example, this movie Spencer just came out and I just purchased it on VHS. That reminds me of that scene in Captain Marvel where she crashes into the blockbuster and picks up a VHS. So do you think of yourself more as an artist or as a business owner first? That's
That's a really tough question. I mean, it's easy, but it's also tough. So I do think of myself as an artist first because of the fact that I love being creative and coming up with new concepts. But there are times in which I have to put on that business hat and realize that I can't get emotional about my art, um, even though it's hard. And I will admit that um, I haven't always gone about things the correct way. Uh, But yeah, definitely artist first and then business second. But I try. I really do try to to, uh, realize that, yes, at this point, it, it has become a business. Well, that's okay. I mean, I think in a way that's better because then it's genuine. It's authentic. It's not just, oh, it has to be about the money. And I I don't think your work comes across like that at all. So I'm not surprised that the answer is artist. But speaking of, I would love to see some more of your work. Can you show us some more examples of your art, please? What you're working on now, all of that good stuff. So one of the things that I'm sure you're love to see that I've been working on is the Harry Potter series. And so normally I will only do new movies that never got VHS releases. However, with the Harry Potter series, half of the films never got a VHS release and the other half did. And for consistency sake, because um, I I do need to have everything very consistent. Uh, one of the things about myself um, that I understand. Is, yeah. <laughs> so this is the first one right here. Oh Let's my see. goodness. I was going to say like, you have some big shoes to fill because I, I had the first two movies, maybe first three on VHS. And so like, I'm comparing this to the, I think that maybe one of the few VHSs I still have is the Harry Potter movies, but like, big shoes to fill and wow though it looks more 80s than because I feel like the Harry Potter VHSs had a 90s look yeah they definitely did but most of my aesthetic is very 80s Uh, occasionally I will go 90s but with this I wanted to have that sort of 80s with a little bit of that um little like 60s comic booky kind of feel as well and so I tried to mix the two flavors together well it's beautiful keep going keep Ooh, I don't know what I was expecting but I like it and I like Dobby so I, who, who doesn't love Dobby <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's adorable okay. And then I love green. So okay. I definitely went green on this one. I'm sorry. That one's my favorite. Like no disrespect to the first two, <laughs> but that one wins. That one wins. I love it. And that's my favorite Harry Potter movie. So it makes me deeply happy. that <laughs> That's my favorite cover too. And this one is actually my favorite Harry Potter film. So I had to put, had to put Cedric Diggory on there because I, mean, yes. I am like, yeah, I if I ever meet Robert Pattinson, that's what I want him to sign for me. Like that yeah. VHS cover. Because I think he would lose his mind. Well, maybe I should uh, see if I can get get you these VHS once I uh, print all of the copies oh. of them. I'll, I'll send something over to you. Oh, that's so <laughs> sweet. Oh my God, Bella Tri- Yes! Yeah. <laughs> this is just me losing my mind over your art. But... Since we're talking about Robert Pattinson, my question, have you seen the Dark Knight movie and what do you think about it? Yes, I have seen the Batman. I actually went to- Yes, the Dark Knight (laughs) (laughs) The Batman. Yeah, I went to see it and I actually do have some uh, artwork for the Batman. Um, Are you willing to- A little bit later. Are you willing to reveal it? Yes. Yes. Okay, continue. Please continue. I know, spoilers, but I had to. (laughs) No, it's so good. It's just, Snape is my favorite character, so rip to the third movie, that's my new favorite. (laughs) (laughs) Those two. Oh my god. I I have a soft spot for for Snape as well. I mean, I'm I'm a Ravenclaw deep down, which is probably why I like Cedric, because I mean, he's a Hufflepuff, and 
we all know the whole <laughs> uh, Cho Chang dating. Oh, yeah. So, so I relate to her. I relate to her like 100%. Yes. Interesting. Again, not not like what I was expecting, but it looks cool. <laughs> For this one, I wanted to kind of make it look a little bit more violent because it is a violent end, yeah. but also mysterious because I didn't want to go through like the stereotypical like, oh, it's a big battle and everybody's fighting and we all know kind of know how it's going to end. Yeah. So. Is that part one or part two, or is it like both of them? So for this, I decided to do both of them. And I know normally when it comes to VHS, some of these movies are really long. And so there would be uh, the part one, part two, insert this disc, insert, no, not this, mm-hmm. but insert this VHS. Mm-hmm. Um, so for this, I just wanted to put everything in one. And also because I plan on turning these into book jackets. Ooh. That's going to look so, so good. And I genuinely love how after looking at all of them, like the art tells the story of Harry Potter so well, and they all go together, but have their different... Allow me to just geek over your art for a minute because, (laughs) oh my gosh, I see why this business like took off the way it did. Because if that's your art, holy shiznit. It's so good. Thank you so much. I, I guess I guess the follow up question to that is like here's where we are now, like thriving. Where where did this start? Where did your Katie video start? How did it go? Did it go how you expected? Like what has the journey been like? So the journey I started off just with um, a few film titles. I did um, some titles that I won't sell again because of the fact that they're from companies that would rather not have any VHS releases like A24. But um, I started off with a few films and one of the first films that I started off with, um, I did it because it's just a movie that I really, really love. And it's the movie mm-hmm. Freaky. And- oh, the one with um, Blonde Girl. I, I know her name, but it's not a good movie. Good movie. Yeah. <laughs> so... I decided I wanted to do that one. And that was the first one that I really heavily promoted. And I didn't have very many followers, but for some reason, um, Michael T. Kennedy, he's the writer of Freaky, found the film and purchased a copy of it and posted it on his Instagram. And I was just like, wait, what? Taken completely aback that this amazing writer found that film. And at the time, I wasn't doing any of this art style. I was just kind of like taking some photos, doing some Photoshop um, Uh on the images, and then just creating these VHS that way. Mm -hmm. And after that, I started working on a few other films and experimenting a little bit more until finally there was, um, I developed an art style for the trilogy Fear Street. Mm-hmm. And at this point, I had already had a bit of a horror following because I liked doing the cover art for horror because it, it just fit with the sort of genre of VHS tapes. Um, 80s. So. I, okay, quick interjection question. Have you ever done or would you consider in the future doing Nightmare on Elm Street 2? I'm trying to remember what year that was. I don't. I don't know. I should know, but I don't. But, th- <laughs> but that's like my favorite classic horror movie, even though it was hated at the time. I, I'm a contrarian and I'm like, no, the second one was the best. Fight me. <laughs> so for any of the films that are like uh, before 2007, I have considered now to just maybe make some poster art of them. Um, but mostly I try to go for anything that didn't have any VHS release. So it, you know, it depends okay. on the year, but yeah, I could probably potentially make make some uh, posters well hoping for a poster because that definitely had a vhs release that was like i think actual 80s <laughs> yeah yeah then it definitely did yeah so i'll, I'll see about making a poster okay sorry continue <laughs> my, my selfish question <laughs> no problem so uh where was i at oh yeah there is the uh movie fear street which Mm -hmm. I decided to do some art for that 
And that was where I started developing this art style. I was playing around, playing around, and then developed this style. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do this because it has that sort of 80s feel to it. And I can kind of take some inspiration from 80s horror films that I've seen in the past and apply that to Fear Street. And when I did that, it just took off. And I was not expecting that kind of a response to the change in my art style. Mm -hmm. And when I then created the box set, because I absolutely love creating box sets, clearly. (laughs) Very cool. Very cool. I created a box set out of chipboard and I used this chipboard design because I kind of wanted to mimic um, films like Titanic and I also kind of wanted to mimic the box sets of like X-Files and so I went ahead and did a box set for it and suddenly I was getting responses from the Fear Street cast saying I want one and I'm just like what? <laughs> like, you're, you're the person in this movie. <laughs> yeah. And so they were asking for copies of it. And I was like, okay, yeah, you all, sure. You're in the film. Like, yes, I'm going to send you something. And then they were posting them holding what I created in their hands on Instagram. And suddenly the numbers of followers that were looking at my work just went up. And I was like, okay, so this has gone from just being a little passion project with some people being interested in my work to suddenly everyone having eyes on this and going, I want a copy. And I can't, I can't beat these demands. Like this is hundreds Mm -hmm. of people wanting this. So it just blew up in just a matter of like several months and it was just unexpected. And then from there, I was able to, um, get in contact with Mike Flanagan because he was like I love what you did with Dr. Sleep and I was just like I've seen that one and it's gorgeous I'm gonna I'm gonna edit a photo somewhere on the screen of it because I do love it (laughs) thank you yeah and he told me that he was trying to get a copy of it and that you know it looked like it was sold out and I was just like oh yeah let me get you get you that you know like you don't have to pay for it it's fine it's like you you made this masterpiece you don't you don't need to pay for a copy of your own film like no 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 let me send that to you but but that says a lot about his character that he was very much willing to pay you as an artist for your work yeah so, and he's I'm glad been to hear that su- yeah he's been extremely supportive and I just I can't believe that how supportive he's been he's He's amazing. And there's also other directors that were like, oh, yeah, you can you can make my uh, film into a VHS. And I was like, oh, my gosh, mostly in the horror community. Um, So big shout out to all the horror directors out there, because the horror directors are so kind and generous and just passionate about art in general. So you really do are at least starting to get some foothold in the like the movie industry the legitimate industry it's not just like like you said like bootlegging so much I mean I'm sure it's kind of on a in a in a gray area between like sure you don't own it yet and the studio isn't happy but like the artists are cool with it yeah definitely that's amazing Um, the one studio that has been well besides Intrepid Intrepid is not well they're not really a studio but they've been very supportive. And then Neon, uh, the ones that worked on uh, Spencer, have also mm-hmm. been extremely supportive as well. So it's it's wonderful to see that there are some uh, companies out there that are like, yeah, uh, bring back the HS. Sure. That's cool. So I have to ask, is the business profitable at this point? Like, are you actually making money from it? Is it still kind of trying to growing pains like you don't have to get into more than you are comfortable with but are you willing to share anything about like the financial side of it I'll just say that I still have a day job <laughs> I'll put it that that's way. fair that's fair it's, it's one of those things where any money that I do make from it it just goes right back into trying to create something that's new and innovative um, try to add to that nostalgia um, putting things out there that people really enjoy. 
as opposed to really trying to make a profit from it. Because my end goal is for people to be able to have a copy of something on VHS and to really let the studios know, hey, if you want to work with me, that's great. Um, and I really want to see VHS as an option, kind of like in the same way that cassette tapes now mm -hmm. have kind of made a, a comeback. And it's not that I think that VHS is going to take over the world, but rather I'd love to see that from a marketing perspective and from a nostalgia perspective, people being able to have VHS in their house. So it's more like a, like what it made me think of is like uh, vinyl records are kind of coming back and it's more like you want it to be part of the marketing and the merch that is available for movies nowadays rather than like the primary way. Exactly. Yeah. And because I think that preserving these old forms of media is, mm -hmm. is important. I'm a preservationist at heart. <laughs> and so I just, I would love to be able to see that studios say, hey, yeah, let's bring this, bring this art form back. That's so cool. Um, but it perfectly leads into my next question of where do you see this going in the future? Like big dreams, but like, where do you see the next steps going the next couple of years? Maybe do you want to open a physical store? I know in DM we said like maybe Comic-Con booths or something like where, where do you go from here? So my first big goal would be to work with a, a studio, whatever studio that is, to do actual official releases of films. Mm -hmm. And then after that, another goal would be to actually bring back manufacturing of VHS. It doesn't have to be large scale, but I would love to see the, that come there, back. There's no manufacturing of VHS tapes anymore? So not really no for the most part when it comes to VHS it's all about finding old VHS tapes and repurposing them to be able to bring it back um yeah so for manufacturing there really isn't anything and I would love to be able to see that come back um uh -huh. especially here in the United States but that's just you know <laughs> personal preference it doesn't have to be and, fingers crossed but like yeah, fingers somewhere crossed. Yeah, yeah. And um, actual good quality VHS too, because I know that you can have manufacturing of VHS and it's kind of just like a, a first show sort of thing, but like actual good quality VHS and something that you can really watch and it kind of like the way the Kodak VHS used to be, which are really high quality. Very cool. I am, I am so excited to learn about this subculture and I'm very excited to see where it goes in the next few years because like I never would have guessed that I would walk into I, I was going into Barnes and Noble and I was looking for a CD because my car still has a CD player and I still listen to them in my car and I was looking for a CD and the person was like we have the vinyl and I'm like, this, this is not something I ever would have guessed so I'm I'm very interested to see where it goes and I'm excited that like Someday when I walk into a media store and I see a VHS tape, I'm going to be like, I know the girl who was responsible for that, for bringing that back. <laughs> I met her. I got to interview her. That's my girl. <laughs> well, that would be the dream. If I can go into Barnes and Nobles and then there's like, even if it's just like a, a small little like um, rack, for example, right? With a few cool. VHS tapes. That would be just amazing. And it's yeah. funny you mentioned vinyl because that was probably what got me into the VHS tapes. I started with vinyl and I actually have a collection of old vinyls. Um, one of my so favorites, cool. one of my favorites being Rumors by Fleetwood Mac. Um, Amazing. My, my mom still has her collection of vinyls, but like her Rumors is like one of the, like she's had it since the album came out. So it's probably worth a lot of money. So. Yeah, but she, it is worth zero because she will not sell it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I feel her on that one. But that's really cool. I, and I've seen a lot of the nostalgia for like Blockbuster, especially Blockbuster in particular, just all the memes about it. And I understand why. I, um, I thought you would find these cool. I, I pulled these out. Um, I have these earrings by an independent earring maker called Shop Purple Banana that they're the Blockbuster membership card. 
I have the Halloween ones, but she has like the original and a couple other colors, but it's it's in the cultural zeitgeist for sure. Definitely. So I thought you'd like those. Oh, I definitely do. In fact, I probably have to check her out after this and uh, oh. see if there's anything that I can purchase, potentially wear for a photo shoot. That would be fabulous. They're expensive because they're like handmade and stuff, but I think they're worth it. I have a shop purple banana collection of all of all the nostalgia. I don't know if I am the person that will ever like have a large VHS collection again, just for space reasons, but I can definitely appreciate the art form more now. And I like that. It just makes me happy knowing that there's this community out there just loving VHS. I will admit that my VHS collection isn't the largest, but it, it's selective. And it's the same for the same reason. I don't have a lot of space. And since I'm making VHS, I have even less <laughs> space. <laughs> That's but fair. I, but yeah, you can still be part of the VHS community and only have a small collection that is of a prized VHS Okay, then, then that makes me wonder, what is your prized VHS? Like your number one, your favorite that you haven't made? Like what movie is it? That you're like, this is my baby. It would be my copy of 2001 A Space Odyssey. I love Stanley Kubrick a lot. Uh, clearly, because I did the Doctor Sleep. Yes. <laughs> I know there's some controversy with uh, Stanley Kubrick fans and the Doctor Sleep mm-hmm. film, but that's fine. Everybody's entitled to their own opinions. Yeah. But that would definitely be my prized, prized possession. Very cool. And I guess... One last question, wrapping it up, looking towards the future. You said you've done a lot of horror. I assume you want to continue to do that. But with like Harry Potter, you seem to be branching out. Where do you want to branch out to? Like, what are some movies that came out this year or in the past couple of years that you're like, that that's on my list? That's actually a really good question. Um, so from time to time, I do like to branch out and make things that are not horror related, especially because I not just a horror fan I I love all kinds of films like I did the Twilight series and while I did do the Twilight series in a very sort of pulp horror sort of style very cool I I do like like I mentioned with Spencer I I love to have um, a little bit of variety bring in a little bit more romance Um, there's a few films that didn't necessarily come out this year but came out in the past that I want to do that are not horror related. And I also want to do a few films that are um, not just action, because I've also done a lot of action. Like I did mm-hmm. a whole thing of Batman. Um, right, oh. you, we have, you haven't shown the Batman. You haven't shown yes, the I, Batman. Actually, um, this is not the box set that I did, but this is gonna be coming out shortly. I did a big box version of the Batman. And so the big boxes were, as it sounds, bigger boxes uh, with more art space for the uh, VHS tapes. And the back looks. That's so fabulous. And then this one opens up like this to have the VHS in it. I, I love it. That's amazing. And this is an original um, big box. Oh, wow. So you can kind of see like a, a side-by-side comparison. This one was all made from like cardstock. This one is um, a little bit heavier duty. Mm-hmm. And so like, that's how they used to do them. That's so cool. And oh my gosh. Kind of. Well, if any movie yeah. deserves it, it's the Batman. That movie slapped. <laughs> it was really it- good. If you ever make a Dune, like, dust jacket for a book or something, like, I'm sorry, I will be ordering it. Like, I will be like, here is my money. Give me. Actually, Dune is on my list of films to do. It definitely is. I, when I was younger, I actually saw the original Dune. And I know that people are going to say the original Dune is really, really bad. And I will admit that I haven't seen it since. (laughs) So, you know how it is. It's like your memory of things when you're a, a child you kind of think of it in like these glossy, oh, it's really amazing terms. So probably when okay. I rewatched it. Hold on to that feeling. Don't rewatch it. Just hold on to that. You know, I enjoyed <laughs> yeah. it. 
So I can't wait to watch the new one um, with that sort of perception of like, this is what got me into Dune, even if it was a bad movie and I don't need to rewatch it again to see exactly how bad it was and to watch the new one because I haven't yet. I've been putting it off. I wanted to see it in theaters. I didn't get to see it in theaters. So I've been putting it off. And so I want to find time to really sit down, watch it. And then I want to make a uh, VHS version of it. And I might even hold you up on that about making a uh, a book jacket for it. That that would be really, really cool. Um, Fair warning, have your remote there so you can turn volume up, volume down, because it's one of those movies that like when they're speaking, you're like, huh? And then action happens. You're like, oh, kind of like a Christopher Nolan film. Yeah. So fair warning. But it it was really good. So do recommend that one. (laughs) This was the let me put it this way. The book, the uh, not the book, the um, VHS set that I did, for and that's for the, the Batman films. So this has um, in it these oh, films. Wow. It has the Dark Knight trilogy. I also did one for Joker, um, the Batman, and uh, the Batman v Superman, which I know was controversial. There's some people who are like, "Why is that one in there?" I just wanted to put as many Batman films that were never got a VHS release as possible inside of this set because you were like because this box set needs to slap that's why yeah because I just I need to have it as Batman-y as possible well that's amazing that's so cool thank you (laughs) all right well I think this video has covered pretty much all my questions. Again, let people know where they can find you, where they can find your wonderful work. So you can find me at Katie Video on Instagram, which is at K A B I Video, as well as katievideo.com. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for being my first ever interview on my channel and being such a wonderful interview. <laughs> Thank you for being so amazing. I try. <laughs> <laughs> you don't okay. have to try hard <laughs> all right all right well <laughs> thank you so much to everyone watching and i will see you all next time and i will see you hopefully soon yes like sorry will. you're we, we got to zoom more <laughs> yeah we definitely do